Hey guys, uh, emergency stream coming at you. <laughs> um, I'm joking, but not for real. Happy days because <laughs> CNN Plus just went under after a grand total of three weeks. Mm, that it's quite is, a stretch. A lot of memories made there. I love that. That makes me so happy. <laughs> So I know that um, McKinsey sort of convinced them, like, you got to get into streaming because streaming is the future of news and politics. And they're like, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. And then they hired, like, all the same idiots who get no ratings on when their stuff is free and they put them and behind like, a paywall. Let's make, let's do more of that. Only this time people have to pay for it. And the reason why, <laughs> the reason why it feels so good is that it just proves what we've been saying all along, miles which is, sorry right. for the directions. Um, it proves that without them getting propped up by algorithms, they're useless. Like, this proves beyond any reasonable doubt just how rigged YouTube is, mm, you know? I yep. mean, they they push authoritative news content, and so when you force feed, In you said this earlier, you force right feed to... a billion people, uh, you know, CNN videos in their YouTube recommendations and then you get 500,000 people to click on it, you know? Whereas for us, they try to like bury it and hide it. Or even doesn't shit just autoplay sometimes too? Like, um, yeah, couldn't so, some of those views um, just be you didn't even really want to or mean to watch it? It just autoplayed after you watched some other video that you actually wanted to watch? So for my people, this is what they say. They say it almost always redirects to like John Oliver mm. or Trevor Noah. Which is interesting because what that says is I'm in I'm I'm like lumped in with, you know, the slightly more edgy and outsider official stuff, but it's right. still the official stuff. Like it's still the approved. Yeah. Stuff. So like John Oliver is as edgy as they are right. really willing to go. Yes. And so it used to be people would watch a video of mine if they had it on autoplay. It would just keep playing videos of mine. Now it never plays mine back to back. Mm. Anyway, so you had an article on it that you wanted to. Uh, yeah. Well, so Kyle has an I, I saved for him. The official article. This is from the New York Times. Um, now, I didn't read the article. I just saw the headline that CNN Plus went under. Yeah, so I'll give you some of the details here. Okay, okay so here. I'll have it on you while I'm reading this. CNN Plus streaming service is set to shut down. Mm -hmm. The new corporate <laughs> owners of CNN. Sorry, it's hard to read this and yeah. also film. Are moving to end the new streaming service just weeks after a splashy debut. Warner Brothers Discovery. Splashy debut? That's what they say. Okay. Yeah, in their own minds, I in guess. My ass cheeks. <laughs> Warner Brothers Discovery has decided to shut down CNN Plus, the Ballyhooed, great word, streaming service that had been intended to bring CNN into the digital future just weeks after its flashy debut. According to two people, service is set to cease operations on April 30th. Andrew Moore, CNN's chief digital officer and a key architect of the streaming st strategy, will also step down. So that dude is apparently getting fired. Um, Chris liked licked i don't know the incoming president of cnn called an all-hands meeting among cnn plus staffers for noon on thursday to share the news comes just weeks after it was launched with ambitious plans to spend heavily and expand fast under its former president jeff zucker cnn lord big stars including big stars including chris wallace yep. audi cornish big stars. and food writer allison roman the services fortunes changed abruptly after CNN's former parent Warner Media, owner of the pr prestige TV powerhouse HBO and the storied Warner Brothers Film Studio, completed its merger with Discovery. Since the merger closed earlier this month, doubts have swirled over the future of CNN Plus, which was promoted to CNN employees and subscribers as the future of the network. Sorry. Um, so that's basically the idea. They, there was kind of a... Oh, they also say here, this is good. Um, CNN had planned to spore, spend more than a billion dollars a billion dollars on CNN Plus over four years. According to people familiar with the matter, budgeting for 500 additional employees, including producers, engineers, and programmers, running out an additional floor of its offices in Midtown Manhattan to accommodate them. But the newly formed company has its own corporate priorities that could conflict with the big spending of CNN Plus. So that's the long and short of it. They also do go on to mention at the end here is kind of the kicker. In March, as the merger with Discovery Loom, CNN held a launch party for the new service at Peak, a sleek restaurant and bar at 30 Hudson Yards, not far from the network's New York offices. At the party, CNN announced that Ted Turner, the voluble founder of CNN, was the service's first subscriber. Which reminded me, Kyle, that when um, they launched, they, first of all, they sold NFTs. 
oh the first God. like seconds of the lunch. That's your first clue was a giant scam. Hilarious. And second of all, they touted it as the most significant launch in CNN's history since the founding of the network. And they spent accordingly. Like they clearly believe that because they said they plan to spend a billion dollars over four years, which is bananas that anyone thought that was going to work out. And sec they had already spent reports say $300 million on this thing to, yeah, recycle the same talent that no one, you know, five more hours of Brian Stelter that no one ever wanted. I think I'm really glad you brought up McKinsey because I think that's a really important part of this because one of the things that it exposes without a shadow of a doubt is that the idea of the meritocracy and like that these people were the best and the brightest and they ascended to the highest heights on their merit and all of that, like obviously completely silly because everyone with half a brain and like who had ever consumed any media knew that this was doomed to failure. Now I thought they'd hang in there maybe longer than three weeks just out of like pride and stubbornness and foolishness, but we all knew that there was no way in just a free you know, actually open competition where people can choose what brands they care about, what they want to spend their money on, what products they want to consume. There was no way this was going to succeed. So one of the best takes I saw is somebody on Twitter was like, they should have just shut it down and seen how long it took for anyone to notice that it was even gone. So, so what happens now? Because I thought they were going to roll it into Discovery Plus and something yeah. else, but are they not even doing that? No. So it's just, just dead. They just it's just literally dead and axed. Wow. In fact, hold on, I'll redo something else. I have um, the, uh, let's see, this was sent to me in my DMs. Here's the internal note that was sent to employees at CNN. They say, um, first of all, they say, let me be clear, this move is in no way a reflection of the talented and hardworking people. Oh, blah, blah, it definitely blah, is. Blah, Look, blah, I got blah. nothing but love for, like, the camera people. And, yeah, like, those people. yeah, right. But, like, the, ta the talent? And even the, Casey Hunt? like, high-level producers. Wait, Casey Hunt, Chris Wallace, like... Stelter, Tapper, well, Anderson Cooper. I love the hit that their egos are taking right now because it's like, this is their bubble bursting a little so bit. That's what's so glorious about it. This is their ego being bruised because it's like... Did, some of them probably genuinely started to think like, yo, people like me. Like, I got a CNN show. I'm about to be on the streaming service. Yeah, that's the thing is they, because cable news is ubiquitous and it's just on in the background. And because it's so important in elite circles, they actually confused themselves into believing that people cared specifically about what they had to say. And that they would show up for these specific personalities when, no, they're completely like forgettable interchangeable pieces of the elite establishment cogs you and, know and it's it's silly that anyone was gonna pay money to consume any of this programming and cnn is just propped up by massive amounts of ad money and by money from dubai mm -hmm. there's a lot of That's dubai right. money and adam johnson uh of fair fairness and accuracy and reporting he wrote a detailed piece about how ever since they started taking money from dubai there were all these like puff pieces on dubai Ooh, Dubai yeah. is up and coming. Ooh, look at the that tallest skyscraper in the I world. That from, too. Yeah, and so <clears throat> it was just like it's all smoke and mirrors, basically. You know, like it literally is just on the, the in the background at airports and hotels. Nobody watches, nobody cares. And then when you actually go directly to the people and say, "Hey, you know, do you want to pay to watch it?" The answer is an overwhelming, resounding no. And so what I want you to do, Crystal, is explain to people how this business really works because we're in this business. Right. So. Um, I mean, first of all, the idea of having such a ridiculously high overhead can't is just foolish. You can't do it. You There's can't no do way. it. You it's can't not do necessary. It I mean, Sagar and I's overhead at breaking points is significantly higher than like yours, for example, at Secular Talk. And that's probably the, you know, just to have like the set and the producers and have elements and have it somewhat feel like a mainstream product, which is something that, you know, our audience really appreciates. Um, that's probably the highest level of overhead that you can reasonably so have. So I have, what, three employees, basically, or three workers. Mm -hmm. You have, what would you say, five, six, Yeah, seven? we've got, I mean, here's here's our whole staff. We've got um, the crew. There's usually three guys in the control mm -hmm. room who are, you know, doing the miking and audio and running the teleprompter and running the um, control panels. So, uh -huh. and then, um, you know, doing the editing. We've got James, our producer, of course. 
We've got um, mm -hmm. a couple guys that that do graphics for us. And am I forgetting anyone? So what are we at now? Seven. So yeah, basically like five five people. Right, and again, that's the top end of what you can do. Because, yeah. And by the way, for people who are starting now, I'd say you literally can't have anybody because no, you're yeah, not gonna you're not gonna have that if, up, unless you can upfront a lot of costs and sustain a loss for a long so time. So if you're building from the ground up right now, it's almost impossible because of the way the algorithms work and how they suppress we new stuff and they want only authoritative news and well, politics. But let me say this too, because um, at the Hill, they way overspent uh, when we were at the Hill. They way overspent on the set on um like the team was way too large i mean there was massive overhead there and so even though rising was a huge success in terms of it grew really quickly and you know got really great views and you know people really uh, enjoyed and appreciated it it's still on its own it still did not turn a profit for the hill to my understanding i didn't have insight into you know every one of the numbers but because even that overhead was too high to sustain even something that people actually wanted to watch. So, um, so yeah, you can't have that massive overhead and then you have to have something that people actually want to pay streaming, for. Streaming is much more like a small business, like streaming or new media is much more, you have to take a small business mentality into it. Whereas the business that they're in where they're giant legacy corporate media, yeah. it's a totally different business model because again, you have limited, selections on TV and you're totally propped up by advertisers and by big yeah. both monarchy money. Right. And so it's just a totally different business. Right. And it's a different, this is one of the first things I noticed transitioning from cable news into the YouTube world is the, the audience interaction is very different. So cable news, you're on the background. If they take in like one thing you say, you're lucky. Not because they're necessarily like unintelligent people watching. They're just, it's just a, it's, it's background noise by and large. Whereas, you know, if someone actually affirmatively chooses to watch your video, they're usually actually plugged in and engaged. So you can have much more nuance in depth, make complex points um, and hold people's attention for a longer period of time. So if you don't have some kind of content, whether it's a person or a series or whatever, that really draws people in in that way and offers them something they're not getting somewhere else, it's not gonna succeed. So one of the things that, look, mostly I just have complete joy at this because I think CNN is bad for the world. I think it divides people. I think it has, you know, they, they've been dishonest about a lot of things. So I have no qualms about like cheering for their demise. But the one take that I've seen that's kind of irritating is they're like, oh, well maybe streaming news just doesn't work. Uh, it's like, uh. Uh, no, uh, no, that's that's not the takeaway here. It's just that nobody wanted the type of format and personalities and analysis that you were offering. And that's the other thing that I think is important about new media is it's not just the content. It's like people feel like this is a part of their identity. You know, if they're a secular talk fan, if they're a... Uh, you know, TYT person, if they're a breaking points person, they're like picking this is... you, they're picking you out of an ocean of content. Right. Like they have every option in the world and they're picking you. So obviously there's going to be a strong, like parasocial relationship there. Right. And it's, it's both that maybe they're getting, um, they're learning about issues that aren't being covered elsewhere, other places. They're hearing about it from a different perspective. That's not typically represented. And there's some sort of um, ideological project that they believe in that they want to affiliate themselves with too. So CNN Plus didn't obviously didn't have any of that going for them. And so, yeah, it was, I mean, it was doomed from the start. We knew that. I'm, again, surprised it was doomed this quickly. And I think there was some, there was some like corporate fiefdom, internal drama stuff that kind of played into how quickly um, it went down. But I mean, in a way, you have to respect the fact that they pulled the plug so quickly instead of letting it bleed for, for years and years foolishly. But remember, we covered, we saw the numbers. They were getting like 10,000 people a day to watch it, which is utterly pathetic when you spent a quarter of a billion dollars in launching this thing. There's going to be zero self-reflection mm. among anybody involved in that project. That's and true. that's going to drive me crazy because... Yes, the fact of the matter is, you guys need to look in the mirror because you have every single institutional advantage in the world. Like I said to you before, if they 
if a billion people get recommended a CNN news video and 500,000 people watch it, that's such a colossal failure too because if you take your titles and your thumbnails or my titles and my thumbnails and recommend it to a billion people, that video is going to have like 15 million views or some way higher percentage. Yeah. And that's just one little example of like, they're, they're in an entitled position and they don't even realize it. They were born on third and they thought they hit a triple. Yeah. And like, this right. is the first time that, that bubble's been popped a little bit. Like the illusion is, at, it, they've been unmasked. And I don't think this is going to lead to any reflection. I think it's going to be pointing in different directions and saying it was this person's fault or that person's fault or you shouldn't get, should have given us more time or... Like, maybe if you made this little tweet to it, it would have been fine. No. That's That's probably, I bet a lot of people will say, internally, they'll probably think, oh, well, you should have given it more time. It just launched, and people were just learning about now, it. Now, your first day is always your biggest day, and they had, what was it, less than 19,000 or 19,000 signups on the first I day mean, or app downloads on the first day? It, it, when you are a big player, established player like that, yeah, your first day is going to be the biggest day. It's and, everybody's biggest day, no matter well, who you I are. Well, I mean, if you're just starting out brand new and nobody knows who you are, that's a different deal, but that's not... Oh, I was thinking that's of you even rising and right, that, you know, yeah, I mean, first day is going to be your biggest day. Exactly. For when we launched Crystal Kyle and Friends, first day in terms of signups is the biggest day. That is, when you're an already established player, that is definitely the case. So, um... There was it. The other thing it reminded me of is, you know, in Hillary Clinton's campaign, they spent way more money. They spent so much money to promote her and the ads and whatever. But if you have a product ultimately that people don't want, you can spend a quarter of a billion, you can spend a billion, you can spend five billion, and it does not matter. Because Unless you're on YouTube and then they rig the algorithm for you. <laughs> people do not want it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's and by right. the way, this is not like Hillary Clinton's campaign. This is like Jeb Bush's campaign. Because Hillary Jeb. Clinton's campaign went a lot further. This is Jeb. This is like, yeah, how, what did he spend, true. like $100,000 per voter or some oh, crazy yeah, shit like that? Wild. Don't quote me on so that. That's not money. the exact number, but it was. A, it, he spent so much per voter. Yeah, he that it was had like the laughable. whole war chest. That's right. Yeah. That is a better comparison. So, you're right. CNN is the please clap. <laughs> I'm go, please clap. They're kicking me out. They're kicking me out. That's what they are because. Yeah. Nobody's interested, man. But look, I'm happy that for once they got a little taste of what meritocracy is really like. Mm -hmm. Because this is meritocracy. That is meritocracy. Yeah. And they spent, it, actually, I'm wrong. Because they spent $250 million on advertising. Imagine they spent no money on advertising, or they spent like a million dollars on advertising. What would have happened then? You wouldn't have even got the 19,000 signups, you know? Yeah. Well, and here's the thing is um, they know that their current, the reason they made such a big bet on this is because even though look they're fine they're printing cash for now they're all good they know long term their business is actually in trouble because the average age of a cnn viewer this is the true for all three of the cable news networks by the way uh is something like 67 years old um obviously you know trump rescued them in terms of ratings their ratings have fallen off a cliff since he's gone and so they know that they have a problem on their hands in terms of their core business model but obviously they have no idea how to solve it and so you can bring in every McKinsey consultant in the world you can bring in you know you can spend a quarter of a billion dollars you can bring in all of the quote-unquote top talent from the world that you're living in but they they are fundamentally incapable of understanding what this market actually would, what it actually demands and what would actually be successful. So, but I would argue that since they've effectively cornered the market and rigged the market on cable news though, so like even though they're abject failures, as long as it's still on in the background at hotels and bars and airports, they're going to be fine. But they're going to be fine in that old model. They're going to, they're, that's their place. Their place is, we rigged it, we're one of just a handful of players mm -hmm. and like we're staying here. Yeah. And so they're fine there, and they'll keep making a preposterous amount of money there. For a while. For a while. It's just the whole cable news model is kind of dying. Um, with yeah, the number we've, of... We've been saying that for a decade. It's like, well, yeah, what's well, like going to happen Trump, it's going to die? Trump, act, Trump kind of rescued them. But there's no, there's no doubt that writing is sort of on the wall for them long term. But yeah, in the short, medium term, they're, they're doing fine. They're fine money-wise. They'll keep on... Keep on keeping on in their rigged market, and they'll come up with a lot of convenient excuses for why this failed that have nothing to do with their own. Yeah, I, th I think what talent. frustrates me the most is that they're, they're just wholly unaware of all the stuff that's going on around them 
and progressing around them. Yeah. How there's Twitch, how there's YouTube, how there's streamers of all different ideological stripes that can pull more live viewers than they can. They just don't know about that, and they don't have to care about that because, again, when the game is rigged on cable news and when the game is rigged on YouTube to pump their stuff out there, it's like they're the ultimate charity case and welfare case. And that's why this feels so good with them CNN Plus going under because it's like, oh, when you can't rig it, this is what happens. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. there's that. That's exactly, that is exactly right. Yeah, I mean, just think about that. If you're launching a streaming news network, to not even consider one person who's been successful in that space. They just took all outside the Outside of, they're just like, let's just replicate CNN. Chris Wallace, they took Chris Wallace from Fox News. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, there were reports too about how he was apoplectic about how low mm -hmm. the ratings were. And he was like demanding a, pro a show on... CNN, there's going to be, you know, because uh, Chris Cuomo is out, obviously, so his primetime slot is kind of available. So now so. they're all thinking, did I damage my brand? Mm -hmm. That's what Chris Wallace is thinking. That's what Casey Hunt is thinking. That's what Anderson Cooper is thinking. That's what, who else was on it? Tapper had, Tapper's, Take Tapper's book, book Club. club. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I want to do. That's how I want to spend my time. I think he had something on there, too, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I think he did, too. Imagine spending, oh, Stelter was on there, too. Yeah. Um, imagine like I want to spend my time reading Harry Potter with Jake Tapper. <laughs> like nobody has ever thought that. Nobody. So anyway, that's what we think about that. Yep. You got anything else? Uh, no. But do we have some champagne in the truck? We could pop it. <laughs> we'll see. See what we got in here. <laughs> see y'all later.